I've wanted to go to a formal event and dress up and dance for a long time. I told him this when we got together a year and a half ago. Finally, a Valentine's Day event popped up and I bought us both tickets and asked him. I said, I know it's not your thing, but I would love to dance with you and have fun. Please don't accept if you really don't want to, so I can go with my mom or a friend. And of course, he hits me with the, oh, of course, I'll participate. We can do things for you. I'm not a jerk who will sit and ruin it for you. Which, to be honest, he has done with my things before, which is why I was nervous. So we go and he immediately decides he doesn't want to dance. We do some of the other things they offered there. Although when they asked us questions, he said, I don't know, it's your thing, and wouldn't talk further. And finally, we decide to leave because he was willing to dance with me once, but hates the spotlight. So I tell him to not worry about it. I decided to compromise and tell him we can just dance together when we get in for the night. And I was genuinely still happy enough with that as long as we could share each other. As we're leaving, there's a short line for someone writing love poems. And although we wait in it for a bit, I hear them asking about the relationship and to tell them about yourself. I'm over it. I tell him I don't want it and we head out. I don't want to answer for both of us. For some reason, we get to talking about romance novels I like on the drive back, and I mention the grumpy sunshine trope and how it reminds me of us. He tells me, which one are you supposed to be? And then proceeds to tell me I'm not sunshine, more like a gray cloud, because I'm always so down. I was so hurt, and I even told him that made me sad. I'm always super bright and smiley even when I'm sad, and people have told me what a sweet and positive personality I have my entire life. He just shrugs and tells me he sees I'm coming around. I'm seriously this man's biggest cheerleader, and this week makes five years since my late husband died, so of course I'm wanting to feel special. And I'm a bit down, he forgot. We get in and stay up for a while. I mentioned that we never danced. He says we can in the morning and he's too tired. We never did, and maybe I was supposed to initiate again, but what's the point? If I have to beg for it, it's just embarrassing and I want to feel wanted. Now I'm really disappointed and feeling foolish. How do I say this to him without him feeling attacked? I know he'll say that he offered to do it once when we were there, but he also told me he sincerely didn't want to, and I felt uncomfortable pushing him to. Now, for a few comments before the update. Comment one. Okay, I'm going to be as honest as possible without hurting your feelings. This is not the man for you. A lot of the times, a widow usually attaches themselves to the first real relationship after the death of their spouse, and they hold on to it because breaking up would hurt so much as it brings up the grief of losing your husband. This man wants to steal your shine. He wants to emotionally beat you down until you conform. I do not dance. It's not my thing. If my husband had asked me to do something like this with him, I would have jumped at the opportunity. Happy as hell that I get to spend the day with my baby. You sound like a lovely woman who deserves a lot better than some man who acted like a wet blanket the entire night and then tried to say it was really you. Comment two. A therapist once told me that people judge themselves by their intentions and others judge them by their actions. It was a light bulb moment for me. I had been in two relationships back to back with men who would say, I'll do X for you. Then I'd be disappointed when they didn't do X and they'd be all shocked, Pikachu, when I had those feelings. It was a repeating pattern, and it got to the point where I'd have to beg them to just not say things like, I'll do X because of the cycle we'd be in. I'd tell them to just keep it to themselves. I'd encourage you to think about whether your boyfriend falls into that. He might think he deserves a gold star because he went even though he had a met attitude. Now, hey everyone, back with an update on the Valentine's Day saga that's been unfolding over the past few days. I know some of you were curious to see how things panned out after my last post, so here goes. After the whole fiasco with the dance, or lack thereof, things took a turn for the unexpected. You see, my boyfriend, let's call him Mark, has always been the type to avoid the limelight. He's the guy who would rather blend into the background than be the center of attention. This has been a recurring theme in our relationship, and it's something I've tried to be mindful of, especially since I'm the complete opposite. 
I thrive in social settings, and I've always been the one to drag him to events, hoping he'd eventually find some joy in them. Now let's rewind a bit to give you some context. Mark and I met through a mutual friend about a year and a half ago. He was quiet, reserved, and honestly, a bit of a mystery to me. I was immediately drawn to his calm demeanor, which was a stark contrast to my bubbly personality. We hit it off, and before I knew it, we were dating. I remember telling him early on about my love for dancing and how I longed to share that with him. He'd nod and smile, but I could tell it wasn't his cup of tea. Fast forward to the morning after the event. I woke up feeling a mix of emotions. I was still reeling from his hurtful comment about me being a gray cloud, and the fact that we hadn't danced as promised. I decided to confront him about it, hoping we could reach some sort of understanding. I found Mark in the kitchen, making breakfast. The smell of coffee filled the air, and for a moment, I hesitated, not wanting to ruin the peaceful scene. But I knew I had to speak up. I approached him cautiously and brought up the night before, explaining how his actions, or lack thereof, had made me feel. To my surprise, Mark put down the spatula and turned to face me, his expression serious. He admitted that he had been insensitive and that he hadn't realized how important this was to me. He then shared something I hadn't expected. He had been feeling insecure about his dancing skills and was afraid of embarrassing himself in front of me. It was a side of him I hadn't seen before and it made me see the situation in a new light. We sat down at the kitchen table, and for the first time in a long while, we had a heart-to-heart. -heart. Mark confessed that he had been struggling with the idea of living up to my late husband's memory, especially around the anniversary of his passing. He felt like he couldn't compete with a ghost and that he was constantly falling short of making me happy. I was taken aback. I had no idea he felt this way. I reassured him that while my late husband would always have a special place in my heart, Mark was the one I chose to be with now. I told him that all I wanted was to create new memories with him, to share moments that were uniquely ours. After a long discussion, we reached a compromise. Mark agreed to take dance lessons with me, but only if we could do it privately, at least until he felt more comfortable. In return, I promised to be more understanding of his boundaries and to not push him into situations where he felt exposed. The following day, we had our first dance lesson at home. It was awkward at first, with both of us stepping on each other's toes more than once, but as the music played and we moved together, something clicked. Mark started to relax, and I could see the joy in his eyes as he twirled me around our living room. It wasn't the grand romantic dance I had envisioned, but it was real, and it was us. We laughed, we stumbled, and we held each other close. And in that moment, I realized that sometimes the most meaningful steps we take are the ones we're afraid to take. My wife lies about her kid's dad, and it's the son of our family friend who's still messaging her. So I confront him and in-laws at a gathering, and now we're on a trip trying to fix us. I am a 29-year-old man who finds myself at a crossroads in my marriage. There is a situation that has caused me to question trust and honesty. When my wife and I started our relationship, she told me that she had a baby unleaving during her late teens and that the father was Mark, who was her second relationship. I appreciated her honesty and it didn't bother me. However, I recently found out that the actual father is John, the son of a close family friend. I don't like him and you'll understand why later on. What troubles me is that John is present in our lives. He is often at family gatherings and events, and it's common in our culture to drop by at relatives' houses, so I run into him at my in-laws randomly too. Complicating matters. During a visit home, John tried to persuade my girlfriend at the time to end our relationship and get back together with him. I only found out about their past relationship when I confronted her about her distant behavior during the trip. I told her that John knows me, has seen us together, and by telling her these things, he shows no respect for her or our relationship. She agreed and told me not to worry about it. I haven't brought this up with my wife yet, and I'm not sure how to. Any advice? Mentally, I'm questioning why she didn't give me the full truth, and if we need to reconsider our marriage because I wouldn't have known about this if we hadn't moved back home unexpectedly. Thank you for any insights.
Now, for a few comments before the update. Comment one, are you in touch with Mark? Perhaps she didn't feel comfortable telling you who contributed to the baby on a living because she didn't want things to be weird when you were around John and never imagined that it would become more relevant. Not making excuses in any way, but baby on a living can be a touchy subject and this may have seemed like a white lie that would prevent awkward interactions. Best suggestion is to talk to her. Ask why she wasn't honest. Ask for more details about John if you think it will help you. Communicate the loss in trust. Comment two. How did you find this new information out? Like, did she tell you or did someone else tell you? Did she change her mind and decide to be honest? Or did she only admit the truth after someone else told you? Did she give a reason for why she changed her story? I find it weird to tell you about it, but lie about who the father was. Now for the update. Hey Reddit, it's been a month since I last posted about the bomb I discovered in my marriage. I've got an update for you all, and let me tell you, it's been a wild ride. So after I found out that John, not Mark, was the father of the child from my wife's past baby on a living, I was reeling. I couldn't wrap my head around why she would lie about something so significant. I mean, we've been together for years, and I thought we had no secrets between us. But this, this was a whole new level of deception. I decided to confront her about it. It was a tense conversation, to say the least. She broke down, crying, saying she was scared I'd judge her or look at her differently if I knew it was John. She said she wanted to protect our relationship from any outside drama. I understood her fear, but it didn't make the lie any less painful. The heartbreak didn't stop there, though. Remember how I mentioned that John tried to persuade my then-girlfriend to break up with me? Well, it turns out that wasn't the only time he tried to meddle in our relationship. My wife confessed that John had been sending her messages, trying to rekindle what they had before. She swore she never replied to him, but the fact that she hid this from me was another blow. I was angry, not just at her, but at John for disrespecting our marriage. I had to see him at a family gathering not long after our confrontation. It was awkward, to say the least. I could barely look at him without feeling a mix of anger and betrayal. But here's where things get even more complicated. During the gathering, John pulled me aside. He had the nerve to tell me that he still had feelings for my wife and that he thought she was making a mistake by being with me. I lost it. I didn't throw a punch, but I told him, in no uncertain terms, to stay away from us. The fallout from that confrontation was intense. My in-laws got involved, and there were a lot of heated discussions. My wife was mortified that everything had come out in such a public way. She kept apologizing, saying she never meant for any of this to happen. In the midst of all this, I started to question everything about our relationship. I thought back to the early days, how we'd met through mutual friends and hit it off right away. We'd had our ups and downs, but I always believed we were solid. Now, I wasn't so sure. I spent a lot of nights on the couch, thinking things over. My wife tried to talk to me to explain her side of things, but I was too hurt to listen. I felt like I didn't even know her anymore. Then, just when I thought things couldn't get any worse, I found out that my wife had been planning a surprise anniversary trip for us. She'd been saving up for months, wanting to make it special after the rough year we'd had. It was supposed to be a second honeymoon, a chance for us to reconnect. I was torn. On one hand, I was touched by the gesture. On the other, I was still struggling with the trust issues her lies had caused. I didn't know if a trip could fix what felt broken between us. We ended up going on the trip, and it was a roller coaster of emotions. There were moments when it felt like we were the couple we used to be, laughing and enjoying each other's company. But then there were the quiet moments, where the weight of everything hung between us, unspoken but heavy. One night, we had a long, honest talk. My wife opened up about her fears and insecurities, about how she felt she didn't deserve me. I shared my own doubts and hurt. It was raw and painful, but it was also a breakthrough. We're still working through things. It's not easy, and I don't know what the future holds for us, but we're trying, and that's something, right? My fiance's secret email reveals intimacy accounts and swingers ads. So I postpone our wedding and drag him back to counseling 
to unpack his insecurities about my success. Fiance and I have been together for many years, about nine years, engaged for two. Things are really good currently, but for many years, I suspected him of being unfaithful. I had no official evidence to back it up, so eventually I had to let it go as insecurity. We went to counseling in 2021, and since then, things have been better. A couple of days ago, I used his computer to record a podcast with my brother and his friends. We have separate computers, but I like using his setup since it's nicer. He's aware of it and never seems to mind. When I tried logging in, I noticed an email address on his computer I've never seen before. I'm familiar with most of his emails, so this one stuck out to me. After the podcast, I decided to log into it since his password was saved into the computer as well. I know snooping is wrong. I won't deny what I did wasn't right. However, we are getting married in a few weeks, and I've had this pit in my stomach for so many years that he may be hiding something. My anxiety got the best of me. I quickly discovered this email address was used for intimacy accounts and messages. Some things did not surprise me or worry me. For example, I've known he's had a Reddit account he uses to read corn or look at photos of girls. While I'm not exactly ecstatic about it, that doesn't bother me much. I also found old Craigslist personals he used to reply to from before we started dating, many that included pictures of himself and his privates. Again, not happy about it, but not surprised. What bothered me was seeing that back in 2018 and 2020, he had restarted old dating accounts, including OkCupid and FetLife. We've been together during this time, so seeing this really surprised me. I didn't get a chance to go through much, but it appears he was talking and making connections with other girls. I don't know for sure if he ever followed through with these connections. The cherry on this messed up cake was seeing that in 2017, while we were planning an anniversary trip to Phoenix, he had been replying to swinger ads on Craigslist with pictures of himself and M.E., asking to meet up during our trip. These photos were of him shirtless and me in a bikini with our eyes digitally blurred. He was telling complete strangers about meeting us on our trip so we could potentially all hook up together. For obvious reasons, this deeply disturbed me. I took photos of it on my phone and immediately logged off. When my fiance came home, I think he knew I had logged into his account because his behavior had changed. Perhaps he got a notification when I had logged in. He's been extra nice to me, tending to my every need and checking on me constantly. When I tried logging back into his account the next day, the password conveniently changed and I could no longer automatically log in. My heart is broken because I want to talk about it with him, but have no idea how. On top of that, it's Valentine's Day, and I'm just not in the mood for anything lovey-dovey. And gosh, I don't even know what to do about the wedding. Considering it's all from the past, should I even care? Should I move on now that things are good and just deal? Now, for a few comments before the update. Comment one, you need to confront him at a minimum. Changing the password shows he is still hiding something from you. The therapy is ineffective if he is still lying force him to come clean to you first. Tell him you know everything, but want to hear him confess it all or you are not going to consider marrying him. Once the truth and the full truth unfolds, you can decide what your next steps are. You truly do not know everything yet until he says it. Just because things got better with therapy does not mean he has been faithful in that time. Comment two. First, yes, you should care. He cheated. Is this loser who you want to spend your life with? and wondering what he is doing now. And yes, he knows you know. That is why he changed his password. And the fact he knows you know and didn't speak to you about it or apologize says it all. Personally, it sounds like you are going to just sit on this and sweep it under the rug. Good luck. Now for the update. Hey everyone, thanks for all the comments on my last post. It's been a rough couple of weeks and I've got some updates for you. So after I found that email on my fiance's computer, Things got pretty tense. I couldn't shake the feeling that something was off. I mean, we've been together for nearly a decade, and I thought we had worked through our issues in counseling. But finding those messages and accounts from when we were supposed to be solid, that hit me hard. I decided to confront him about it. I couldn't just sit on this information, especially with the wedding coming up. 
It was a tough conversation, to say the least. He was shocked at first, then defensive, and finally, he broke down. He admitted to feeling lost at those times and seeking validation from strangers online. He swore he never met up with anyone and that it was all just fantasy. But here's the jaw-dropping part. He confessed that he had been planning to tell me about all of this before the wedding. He wanted to start our marriage with no secrets. He even had proof that he'd closed all those accounts and hadn't been on them since our counseling sessions in 2021. I was floored. I mean, it's one thing to find out your partner has been hiding something, but to learn they were gearing up to come clean? That's a whole other level of emotional roller coaster. We had a long, emotional talk about trust and honesty. It was one of those deep, all-night conversations where you lay everything out on the table. We talked about our past, how we met in college, and how we'd grown together. We reminisced about the good times and acknowledged the rough patches. It was cathartic, really. In the midst of all this, my brother, who I'm super close with, noticed I was off. He's the one I do the podcast with, and he's always had a sixth sense about when I'm not okay. I ended up spilling everything to him. He was furious on my behalf at first, but he also reminded me of how much my fiance and I have been through together. He encouraged me to really think about what I wanted and to consider the full picture of our relationship, not just the recent revelations. After a lot of soul searching, I decided to postpone the wedding. It wasn't an easy choice, but it felt right. My fiance was supportive, which honestly surprised me. He said he just wants me to be happy and secure in our relationship. We agreed to go back to counseling together and work through this new layer of issues. Now, here's the surprise twist. During one of our sessions, my fiance revealed that he had been feeling inadequate because of how successful I've become in my career. I was promoted twice in the last three years, and it turns out he was struggling with not being the provider he thought he should be. It was a shock to me because I've always seen us as a team, regardless of who makes more money. We've been working through that, and it's actually brought us closer. He started to open up more about his feelings, and I've been more attentive to the pressures he's been putting on himself. It's like we're rediscovering each other, peeling back layers that we didn't even know were there. And then, just when I thought things couldn't get any more intense, my fiancé did something completely unexpected. He planned a surprise weekend getaway for us. Nothing fancy, just a cabin in the woods where we could be alone and reconnect. It was there, surrounded by nature and the quiet, that we really started to heal. We talked, we laughed, and yes, we cried. But it was good. It was necessary. We've decided to take things one day at a time. The wedding is still on hold, but we're okay with that. We're focusing on building a stronger foundation before we take that next step. And honestly, I'm content with where we are right now. It's not perfect, but it's real, and it's us. If you like this video, you'll probably like these too. Also, while you're here, please consider subscribing. It's your support that keeps this channel alive and allows me to make better and longer videos. Have a great day.